again good afternoon hello everybody I hope you've had a great day I have done my um, Bible daily dips and now I'm going to continue with our book I wonder what surprises I've got in for myself and you today because I don't read it until I record it because the writing's easier for me in this book than most um, I got cataracts and uh, I am unable to let them near my face unless they knock me out <laughs> and my BMM had to be below 43 they wanted it about 39 uh, that was at a private hospital attached to uh, I think it's called the Sandringham and then they sent me next door to the Queen Elizabeth they won't even give you a tablet, so I would likely to jump out of the chair if anyone came near my face. I'm claustrophobic. Been like that since 2009. So I have to live with the cataracts for now. Anyway, we're going to continue. Um, I might just read the end of what I read last so that anyone following will know what part of the book I'm at and it's just something that I do. The skies may be clear, but it won't be for long. The birds who sing shall lose their song. The bees who hum already succumb to the toxified, weaponized air. This is my recording before they go to their lairs their underground bunkers get down on your hunkers these tunnels and cities out of sight will be unreachable in our blight no entry for us as we are replaced and my dreaded fears must be faced earth will be rebooted reseeded even though it's not needed we will be wiped out if they get their way without a trace i predict my face fate with this brave face control alt delete equals their mission complete not the way I saw the crowds yesterday in London, Munich, Germany, France. We had the most though, didn't we, at Trafalgar Square. There were other countries joining in this rebellion. Let it start, let it roll, let it not stop. Hey, keep going, folks. We'll all do our little bit. And the answer is no! No need to fight. No! No to everything they throw at us. No. Anyway, John Graff from Los Angeles, CA July 25th, 2020, has made this contribution to our book, Third World War, compiled by David Yates, friends and the rest of us who we've never met yet. Spoken, yes, no. 15 or more years ago, I was awakened to the spraying of chemicals into the very air that we all breathe worldwide. It was so hard to grasp that anyone could do something so evil and on such a massive scale. As I researched on it, it all just got more and more heart-wrenching. The magnitude of what was happening to all life on earth just hurt my soul to the core. Things became worse for me when I realized nobody was helping us. Nobody. All those who are paid to help humanity in a situation like this just deny and cover it all up. Why? 
Is there a mass mind control? The only ones who are actually the heroes are the activists who keep trying to expose these crimes and I love them for that. We need them all now. Today is July 25th, 2020. As I drive down the streets of my city, I feel like I'm living in a nightmare. Our mainstream news has announced this horrible so-called virus and have most of the world scared to death. The traitorous news is telling the populations they must stay home, keep away from friends and family, stay six feet apart from everyone, wear oxygen depleting medical masks. Everything these sick news outlets tell people to do is everything that kills their immune system and cuts much of their oxygen off to the brain. What I feel I'm witnessing is the weakening of the herd by some very dark forces. These monsters will turn humanity into brain dead slugs. That seems to be their goal. And I'm sure they will have big smug grins as they destroy all the wonders and beauty of the life we have known. I am now witnessing masses of people wearing these masks. Most just believe the news media. No matter what facts and truths about the mask dangers are, so many businesses are now closed down due to this virus propaganda. They are using this virus hope scare to usher in even more devastating harm to humanity, such as mandatory vaccines. People are jumping through hoops like trained monkeys and totally going along with all of it. I am finding it harder and harder to bear. I never thought in my wildest dream that so many people could be controlled so easily. Where are the macho man heroes? They're wearing masks like little sissies. I thought men were the protectors of the innocent. But I was wrong, sadly. Now most markets and businesses require people to wear the damn mask. If you enter a store without one, it gets very ugly. People who believe the masks are protecting themselves and others will snitch on you or come out and get in your face about it. I no longer enjoy going anywhere. I say amen to that, neither do I. I cannot stomach watching these soulless sets of eyes peering over the clam shells strapped tightly to their faces. It causes me mass anxiety. Me too. Sad to say, but when I see the masked people, they appear to be already be dead. I have a feeling now that if the news told them it was safe to remove the masks, they would still leave them on because of the fear that has been deeply instilled in them. When I do drive through my city, I am witnessing the microwave military weapons aimed at all of us. The skies are unrecognisable now with all the chemicals and aerosolizing going on that is dressed up as geoengineering. Most people are suffocating themselves voluntarily out of complete fear of an invisible bogeyman that they were told about on TV. Television, as Joe Imbriano says on his podcasts, seems to me 
the stage is set for a mass genocidal operation worldwide. When I look around me now and see the truth, it's a major challenge to get through even one day. So much of the world is dead asleep to all of it. I am not making fun of the sleepers and the mask wearers because they have been captured already. My heart, as other truthers' hearts, are with these innocents, scarred for whatever life they have left. They will never be the same again, ever. I have many friends who I thought were pretty intelligent, but they are falling for all of this virus propaganda without actually taking their own proper gander. I had to let them go because I'm not living in their little paranoid, fearful mindsets, especially when I know it is a manufactured lie. It really is heartbreaking to think about the children of 2020 and the horrible crimes they will have to deal with by these heartless beings. If school ever returns, they will have the children wearing masks and staying six feet apart from each other. Can you imagine what that would do to a young, impressionable mind growing up in this intentional war zone? The only ones who can stop this are all of us, all of us, all of us. We cannot comply to anything they say. All of their criminality is outside of the law and fully illegal a million times over. All I can do now is my best to expose these parasites from the bowels of hell and hope that enough will listen and act. Right now I am putting all of my positive energy in watching these criminal operations fail and blow up in their demonic black-hearted faces. People of the future I just want you to know that there are many of us trying to put an end to all of these dark agendas. It's a very difficult task being that we are surrounded by very advanced weaponry. We care about the innocent life of the world and will not let our fight be over. I am there to the end, whatever or whatever may be. And those are the words of John Graff from Los Angeles. And I say amen to all that he said. And I'm going to have a sip of my tea, which is going cold because I didn't drink it. It's not quite cold, but nearly. <laughs> I'm not sure if he wrote this, there's no name so it might be David's. Quiet Wars via Silent Weapons. Calls for control of we the people. Through manipulating industries, peoples and their pastimes, education and political beliefs. The elites want a quiet revolution. Well they ain't met me because I won't be quiet so there you go. Uh, the elites want a quiet revolution pitting brother against brother. A revolution that diverts our attention from what is really going on. Such as social engineering and the automation of a societies on either a national or earthwide scale. 
whilst keeping their plans for depopulation through social controls and the destruction plus genocide of human life a secret, secured from our public scrutiny, denying us the chance of seeing their declaration of domestic war upon us. Their approach is simply to look at human society with cold objectivity, social engineering, high-speed computerized data processing systems and the good old transistor were the three inventions that those in position of power strongly believed that they could use to control the whole world and seemingly at the push of a button. The quiet war was silently declared by the self-appointed international elite in 1954. I was born in 1946, so I was still very small. Give me control over a nation's currency and I care not who makes its laws. Mayor Amschel Rothschild, so we know who they are and how evil they are. Their bloodline is full of evil. The next section is My Disgust by Carol Bennett. The beginning of my journey began when I was a young woman, always anti-establishment. I began questioning everything. The beginning of my disgust with the world began about 20 years ago. It started with chemtrails or geoengineering, which is the media acceptable word David Keith of Harvard University gave it, although it does engineer the weather under the guise of climate change. I do not and never will accept that term because what they are doing far exceeds that term. They are spraying our skies with poisonous chemicals which weakens our immune system, gives many people respiratory problems, kills the bees and flora and fauna, which then impacts the food chain, not to mention depriving us of life-giving vitamin D we and everything else which needs the sun to thrive and flourish and add that to GMO seeds and crops, vaccines which damage so many babies, children and the older population, junk food which is literally made from GM made crap and tons of sugars and fake sugars and exotoxins and you have the perfect storm for a sick, ailing population. Seven plus billion people, most of whom are addicted to the junk food, which is what it was designed to do. Overweight and on the selection of big pharma medications. And now we have supposedly such a virulent virus which has closed the world but back to chemtrails excuse me a moment I'm still thirsty thank you as a kid in the UK 
I remember four definite seasons. Now we have a muddy, grey, dank sky merging into one year long season. Back then, true, we had blue skies, spring, summer and autumn. And if we were lucky, many winters had blue skies too. Not every day, but very many in spring and autumn. But summer skies were clear and blue with fluffy white cotton wool, clear edged clouds. I would watch them float past, pushed by the currents. I was fascinated by the sky when I was a kid. Now it hurts my heart most days to look up. The sky is murky from the residue of endless days of spraying with many dripping toxic lines running up and down, crisscrossing, poisoning anything and everything it touches. Look out through my window, if you can see it, you, you can see there's no, I can't, I can't for, uh, for the life of me turn round and see, but if you look at my windows, the, the weather shows through them, and it is true what she's saying, it's rare for us to have those lovely blue uh, skies with a white fluffy, um, just normal cloud in it, really beautiful. Carry on. Humans, animals, yes, even animals are becoming sick. Crops and insects and endless days of gloom. 20 years ago, I started to question what was wrong with the sky. Day after day, I would say to my husband, now it, she said, oh, how sad. There's something wrong with the skies now, something wrong with the weather. I was on my own. I started counting the days of blue skies and there weren't many. Summer would consist of one or two sunny days a week. Then the contrails looked different, which again, during my childhood, were maybe as long as the plain. In perspective from the ground, the new trails were longer and stretched across the sky and didn't disappear but grew in width and length. My eldest son said to me when we were locked in our homes via a video call of course because we weren't allowed to meet or hug. Mum, I'm angry that you've taken all this to heart and soul. It's changed you. You were always a happy, joyful person and now you're angry or sad or tearful all the time and I'm hurt that you're hurting. They have destroyed the sky, the sky that I took so much joy in and I hate them for it. I do believe that the earth is being terraformed, terra, T-E-R-R-O, terra, terra farmed to support life for beings from another world. I'm sure you mean aliens. That we as humans have managed and thrived on the earth as we knew it for thousands of years. We don't as humans need a metallic atmosphere to breathe. Quite the opposite we don't need a metallic haze around the sun. The sun isn't the sun as I knew it as a kid because there are particles of metal around it. A man-made weaponized sun? We don't need metal in vaccines. 
nor humming electric frequencies in our brains. Very few question it, which is why a select few try to wake people up to what is being done to the human race. It seems at times we're fighting a losing battle. I must have another sip of this drink, sorry. Everyone is so fluoridated, fluoride being first used by Nazi Germany on the Jews to make them compliant and brainwashed by the television. I'd call it television, as Joe Imbriano does, television. And now, in 2020, we have a coronavirus. If you have ever had a cold, it's a coronavirus. If you've had flu, it's a coronavirus. But this one is special. Oh, yes, very special. They have closed the world for this one. They have stopped people hugging, touching and told to keep a social distance from each other. Closed shops, closed schools, stopped children from seeing their friends. Stop people attending weddings and funerals of the people they love the most. Closed businesses. Closed churches I'm putting in. Made many companies bankrupt. The effect of what they've done has tanked economies and is far reaching and devastating. Why? 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 Because too many of you have complied and just let them, never using your God-given brain to question it, although it's been in the planning for hundreds of years. 2020, as bad as it is, is only the beginning of their new world order. 2021, you'll see more of the same. But oh, so much worse. So much more. I can only imagine 2021 but I'll keep on trying to wake people to it and I know all of my friends will in time some will begin to question it but many more will keep on complying they will be the ones dragging us, us, the fighters for your freedom from an evil, tyrannical machine, the fighters for your voice under the bus with them. We do not consent to this, but we are few and seem to have very little choice in the matter but we will not be silenced by censorship we are fighting all the time for sources to be able to express our voices to save you 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 the children and the youngsters, the future 
of this beautiful earth that we call home. Chemtrails was the start of awareness for me. It was my baby and still is. But the year 2020 has made me sad. It's made me angry. It's made me wonder why you won't wake up. Listen to the song. In the year 2525 uh, by Zaga and Evans. I was a youngster when this song came out. I've played it off and on all my life. This song makes me weep now every single time I hear it. Earth Song by Michael Jackson is another very profound song. There are so many songs that told us what we or they were doing to our Mother Earth. Furious! Not my words. They're in here, though. With the human race for not fighting the evil psychos that are implementing our slavery. Thank you, David Yates, for allowing me my voice. I was just trying to. Carol Bennett, that's who is writing this, My Disgust by Carol Bennett. Thank you, David Yates, for allowing me my voice. I'm not sure he will allow profanity. Well, he didn't stop me. He didn't tell me not to read what's in this book. I'm only reading what's here, and I haven't written any, any swear words, but I cannot... Um, leave out what you've written because that's what you feel I understand completely and I, I do not swear in my natural normal life but if I'm reading somebody else's words I have no right to remove them I have no right not to repeat them not to say them because they came from your heart and I understand why you wrote them I used to be a football referee for many, many years, men's football. I sent many, many men off for swearing because in those days, yeah, it was offensive, is it? But nowadays, it's got so that anything goes and anyone can say anything and I, I, I'm not there to adjudicate or to, to leave your words out, Carol, Carol Bennett. No, I didn't leave it out. I wouldn't leave it out. It's not my duty to do that. If uh, where this is is taken down because of it, well, that's a different issue. But I'm sure they're so horrible. It's it's not the those words that will get us taken down. It's telling the truth that will get us taken down. Anyway, I must finish what you've said. We're nearly at the end of it. And yes, I did leave it in. I thought that they might think that I'd said it. <laughs> won't hear them come out of me anymore when I was younger maybe before I was with Jesus Christ but I certainly don't wish to say those things of my own accord but I I accept Carol the message it needed to be said thank you David Yates you said for allowing me my voice I'm not sure he'll allow the profanity well he does say them himself so can't stop you can he? But if he does, again, David, another thank you. I wish with all my heart that my grandchildren, Alex, William, and Sebastian, will read this. Well, I hope they don't hear me swearing it, Carol, because apologise to them <laughs> for me. If not soon, then later, when I am no longer around and know I was fighting for their lives, here for their legacy. I say amen to that because we have grandchildren between us, you and me, so, um, and for our descendants, so they'll hear me swear it. <laughs> if this is still on the internet. Um, they do know that I do this 
But ooh, it's grandma. I am, was, serious kids. And just put a love heart. God bless you, Carol Bennett. Okay. Before I start the next one, I hope you'll excuse me, but I am still thirsty. And the tea is cold. <laughs> okay, maybe I should stop there. Because I think it's long enough because I have trouble if it goes too too far. So alright, God bless everyone and we'll get on with the next part. I'll upload this. That takes some time actually, but I'll upload this and maybe do another one in as well in the meantime. Alright, have a great rest of your day and I apologise to anyone who's offended by swear words. But you have to understand, sometimes in frustration, people say things that are, because it's the only way to express how they're feeling. So God bless and forgive me for offending you. <laughs>